Here on the Michael Geeky Podcast, we have engaged in very candid conversations with well over 100 guests at this point, exploring a range of intriguing topics within the mushroom cultivation community. With our growing popularity comes a responsibility to address privacy concerns regarding some past guests. At our show, we prioritize privacy and respect for our guests. End of story. We're committed to safeguarding their personal information, and sometimes that means removing content at their request. Other times, it simply means taking further steps to safeguard their anonymity. Tonight, we revisit a past episode, which had been removed at the guest's request, but I was able to go back and edit the footage to allow the episode to be re-aired. For some of my longtime viewers, tonight's episode might be familiar, but for many of you, this will be brand new. Either way, I am happy to be able to bring back two of my favorite people in at-home mycology. So get ready to get to know two Facebook icons, Missy Myko and Brock Lee. You're listening to the Myko Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator advocate and educator every week he sits down with fellow cultivators mushroom educators scientists and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives all right what's up everybody welcome to the Michael geeky podcast the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game I'm your host, Mike Ogeeky, and we got a very interesting show tonight. Uh, like I said in the intro, um, I respect people's privacy. I, I take it very seriously and commend anybody willing to come on the show and talk about growing mushrooms, especially active mushrooms. Uh, it takes, uh, you know, a certain life situation. It takes a certain level of risk tolerance, uh, whatever it is. But it, if you've been willing to come on the show, I commend you. Now, I will say this. I'm friends with I'm friends with physicians, doctors, district attorneys, uh, high level businessmen, um, government officials. Uh, who else? Let me think. I'm getting them, getting them all. Uh, pretty high level scientists, uh, people at major corporations, ancillary, uh, you, you know, business services that are sort of mushroom adjacent, but not exactly there. Anyway, people who have jobs such that. It just absolutely cannot be known that they're psychedelic friendly, that they like magic mushrooms, that they like growing cubes. None of this stuff can come out. Those people are not coming on the show. We can talk in DMs, but they're not on the show. Other people have come on the show and then later decided for various reasons, whether they're going through a divorce and they can't have the episode up, whether uh, upon further reflection, the, the they just felt it, it was the wrong move because of their job, their position, maybe they got a promotion. There have been numerous reasons. But anyway, people have asked to to remove the podcast from time to time, and, and I have been very quick to honor those requests. Fortunately, I also had some people who just decided they didn't like what, I'm out, what I was all about, and uh, I promptly and happily removed those podcasts as well. So anyway, what I'm getting at is there's some old content that uh, I just pulled and hadn't gotten around to seeing if there was a way we could get it back up. And uh, my old friend Missy Michael was one of those. Um, she did have a, a solo podcast that aired uh, and was up for a little while before she decided, you know, I don't know. don't know if I want my face out there uh, due to uh, multiple factors. And so I said, cool, I'll pull it down. Um, she did come on later and I was able to blur her face out. So I said, when I got some free time and I can get around to it, I'll do that with your episode. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're going to revisit the Missy Myco episode. I also had another episode where I featured Brock Lee, uh, and I had him on to discuss ethics of vending and buying in the online Myco community. So uh, we're going to tag the end of this episode with his segment. I think it's 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, but it'll be a nice little introduction to uh, Broccoli. He's a, a great grower, uh, a solid vendor, a very ethical guy. So he, he it, it'd be worth uh, sticking around for that. So anyway, you know, as you guys know, uh, Stealthy Spores got a new little, uh, you know, trading card deck out. Um, I was fortunate enough, lucky enough to be uh, on his radar and I guess m made a difference. So uh, don't forget, guys. 
if if you want to get in, this is just a little taste of the old hero, epic hero, holographic, you know, card there. It's cool. That costs 15 bucks. Not cheap, but if you guys are a fan, go, uh, you know, use Geeky as a promo code. You get uh, 10% off. And, uh, yeah, man, it's kind of cool. I think it's great. I think it'll be neat as decks evolve and we get into playing it some more. Um, man, if I'd ever had some freaking free time, I would have already had content up about playing it. But mark my words, it's going to happen. I'm going to hang out with old Jeff Karras and maybe a few other local guys. And uh, we'll, we'll get into a game so you guys can see exactly what that looks like. But even if you're just collecting them, it's it's a pretty cool thing to collect. They're very high quality cards. So again, if you guys want to, uh, you know, buy either individual cards or a, a playable deck, um, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to use uh, promo code Geeky. Uh, so what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Oh, one other thing, but we'll do that next week. That's okay. So anyway, so let's get into it. We're we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. Cut right over to, to the episode. This originally aired, I think it was May 22nd last year. Um, so we're, you know, not quite not quite a year back. But anyway, uh, let's do it. Tonight's guest. Um, she's been on before. She's on tonight. She's going to be on again. Uh, she was my first quality vendor experience. Uh, her, her genetics are absolutely banging, slamming, dripping whatever, you know, old 46 year old guy get, getting the current slang wrong term you want to use. Uh, but her genetics are just pure fire. Uh, I've never had somebody buy from her that wasn't happy. Um, she has got some amazing fruit. We're going to, we're going to look at some pictures tonight. We're going to also talk about, uh, some of the other ways that her uh, passion for psilocybin containing mushrooms has carried over into uh, other avenues of her life. So without further ado, let me welcome to the show. The one and only Missy Maiko. Hi, everyone. What's up, girl? What an All right, dude. So first off, let me just say, I mean, it's been like a little over a year and a half since I, I got that little, uh, you know, small priority mail pro tip, guys. If your vendors send you stuff in, in priority mail, they know what they're doing. They care about it arriving. Um Anyway, I opened that thing up. The cultures looked gorgeous. I'd never seen cultures like that before. Handwritten notes. I was like, oh, a reason to stay in this community. This is freaking great. So uh, I, I, I'm i very, you know, I, I just think this is great that I can have you on, um, that you played a role in me getting passionate and excited about this community um, and both cultivating in, in the medicine itself. So thank you very much for coming on again. Thanks for having me. I think that's a, a big uh, goal of mine is to bring people in the community, have them stay, you know, try to encourage them to keep going despite maybe some, you know, some bad grows or maybe they get contamination. Like I just don't want people to get discouraged. I just want them to keep trying because you can only get better and better. So thanks for having me on. Uh, my pleasure. You are so right. Um, it is the the nurturing quality is very important. Um, people in this community, some of them desperately need this medicine. It is my belief. Um, Absolutely. And it can be discouraging in the beginning. You know, there's there's some things you got to figure out and work through and get right. And um, I have had plenty of people be like, man, I don't know. You know, I've this is my third time and it's still not going right. And I'm trying to do all the things you're telling me. And I feel so bad. I just, I go out of my way to try to help those people succeed. So knowing that there are other people in the community who feel the same way, uh, that's, that's reassuring. I, and I know you're not the only one, but you are definitely a shining example of that. Thank you. Yeah. I just, I try, you know, I, my heart goes out um, for the people who are just trying so hard and, you know, they tell me the story of like, you know, microdosing changed my life or I had a macrodose and it was the most profound experience of my life. It changed who I am and it's, you know, caused me to move in a different path in my life, a more positive path. And to me, that's just it, it speaks to me so much because I right. can relate. I had, you know, the first time I ever took mushrooms in my life, I was like, you know, up there with having you know, children, it's probably the most important, you know, um, 
experience that I've ever had in my life. And it changed me completely. So hearing other people say that and knowing how much they want to, you know, grow a little bit for themselves, or maybe they want to share it with their spouse, or maybe they want, they know somebody, they have a family member, or they have a good friend who's struggling, and they think that this could benefit them. It's really becomes like this network, almost like a mycelial network of people in the micro community. Um, and so to me, like, I, I just, I want to spend extra time with those folks. And, you know, even though I'm, I'm busy, everybody's busy, but, um, I just, I want to spend extra time with them and I want to try to help them to see maybe what they're doing wrong, maybe help them with some tips. You know, obviously it's just based on what works for me because everything, you know, people do things differently and some things work for, for others that doesn't work for, you know, other people. Um, so I think it's really important for me to try to share my knowledge and my experiences and I've had, you know, I'm just fortunate that I've had this opportunity to be doing this now for, I don't know, four years, maybe going on five years now. And so I've learned so much, you know, I've learned so much in the course of this time that I've been, um, you know, cultivating and I, I, and I'm excited. I get excited to share that information with people and to encourage them, you know, to keep going. And that's kind of why as a vendor, you know, I have a variety of things on my menu. I have multi-sport syringes. I have, you know, swab, spore swabs for the more advanced folks. Um, but I keep multi-sport syringes and I keep a good variety of multi-sport syringes specifically for the people who are just kind of starting to dabble um, and wanting to, you know, get their feet wet or maybe they are just really just growing their own small batch for themselves. And so it's just enough for me to, you know, provide, a variety of things, just depending on where you're at and experience, you know, level wise. Um, I just want to have a little something for everybody. Well, I remember when I came to you, I said, look, I'm new. I haven't been successful. I just, I need to knock it out of the park. Just send me some stuff that's going to work. And I mean, my first tubs after I got your genetics, they, they looked, I have grown better since, but not much better. I mean, the, the thing that you start to hear as you get into the community more, uh, for the new people listening, you hear um, that it's all about the genetics. Yeah. And it's not. There's so many other factors. But then once you learn all those other factors, then it's all about the genetics. The genetics, to, to use a comparison, uh, if, uh, for the musicians out there, if you if you've played in bands before, um, if you have a bad drummer, you don't have a band. That drummer holds everything together. Uh, the drummer can make up for a bad guitar player, a bad bass player. You know, they can hold that band together. Yeah. Um, genetics can do the same. So if your your technique is just a little not not great yet, and you're getting a couple things wrong, a really strong genetic can make up for all. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I tell a lot of people too. I'm like, you know, it's so it varies so much. Like like you said, genetics your environment, um, you know, what you were able to isolate really matters and what your results are going to be. Um, I get a lot of a question, I get a lot of questions like, oh, a, fill, fifth, or a 10 um, millimeter multi-score syringe, what is my yield? What should I expect? And it's just like, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, it really just depends. And it just, it really varies. I mean, Obviously, you have some of your standards like, you know, Golden Teacher, or B plus where, you know, you can get maybe four, maybe even five, you know, yield or um, flushes if you're really lucky. Right, right. And just, to, you know, just because they do tend to um, fruit more prolifically than, let's say, like albino varieties. Um, but even some albino varieties, I mean, I've gotten like maybe three or four oh, flushes yeah, yeah. from some of those. And it's amazing. And sometimes I'm just like, it just keeps going. When is it going to stop? <laughs> Not that I could, I should complain about that. But um, yeah, luxury so, problems right there. That's I know, I know, micro vendor problems or micro, yeah, community problems. But it's a good problem to have, actually. Yes. All right, so you're you're up in uh, one of my favorite. I mean, I've not been everywhere in the world, but I gotta say, uh, like especially, we like to get up to Vancouver and Vancouver Island and that little, you know, that microclimate. It's very good for mushrooms. 
It is. Um, it doesn't surprise me that a lot of the really well-known social media mycologists, citizen scientists come from that area. Um, you guys are very spoiled and lucky. You got just so the lucky. climate. Perfect. Climate. So yeah, and it and it's weird because I'm in eastern Washington, right? So the mm -hmm. the environment's just a little bit different than what people expect. Like right. um, you know, what you might experience in Seattle. Like everyone always thinks like Seattle, Washington, it's it's just raining and it's wet. And of course they think of um Twilight, which is lame. But um, but I mean, really eastern Washington is 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 more arid. Um, we get wonderful like foraging time here, mostly for morels, but things like, you know, chanterelles, matsutakis, well, you can still find those over here. They're way more prolific in Western Washington, just because you really have those ideal um, environments. Like we have the rainforest over there. It's wet. It, it gets warm. It's been getting hotter and hotter every summer. I swear for the last six years, the summers have gotten hotter and hotter. So with that combination, I mean, you're just getting such a wild biodiversity of fungi of just everything <laughs> so i feel really lucky to to live here uh yeah it's it's a gorgeous uh gorgeous part of the country for sure um yeah. so so tell me uh your myco origin story i want to know like your earliest mushroom memory and then uh get into really how you started growing how that yeah, so <laughs> I think my first introduction to psychedelics was listening to Joe Rogan, <laughs> which is funny enough. Um, but I remember I had gone through some really tough, traumatic times, especially in my uh, early 30s. I had, you know, I went through a really rough divorce. I had a really, really bad uh, child custody um, battle that I experienced in court that was extremely traumatic for me. I had someone very close to me go through a very bad um, opiate addiction um, and just dealing with that and just trying to work through a lot of these intense, intense events that happened in my life that completely changed my life and turned it upside down. Um, I could tell that, you know, I needed a way, you know, I, I don't know if you know about how women, you know, if they feel like they need to kind of vent or, you know, maybe they're just trying to get over a bad breakup, they eat ice cream and watch these really sad movies and just cry. You know, I needed something like that, but not so, um, not to that degree. Like I really needed like a soul intervention um, is how I like to describe it. Like I could tell that I was just unwell. My soul was unwell. You know, I didn't have anything to really turn to. Like I turned away from the church a long time ago, grew up Catholic. So I don't, I didn't have any like, faith based thing to fall on and but just also knowing that something is wrong internally and I need to fix it and I need to figure out a way um uh, to do that and I remember <laughs> Joe Rogan talking about GMT and I just remember thinking this is what I need no it's not what I needed because I've never you know if if you would have told me 10 years ago like hey one day you're just you're going to be growing you know uh active mushrooms and this is going to be your passion I would have been like you're crazy because I'm not someone who, you know, I, I very rarely drink. Um, I don't partake in, in cannabis often, uh, very rarely. Um, so knowing that I'm a pretty straight laced individual and don't really care to have, you know, mind altering experiences, it, it, it just never would have occurred to me. And I wouldn't have believed it if you told me. But I just remember thinking like, I live in Washington state. And we have active mushrooms that grow here in our state on the coast, not so much where I am right now. Um, so I started kind of digging into this. Okay, so psychedelics are, you know, um, psilocybin mushrooms are kind of in that same kind of family of psychedelics like DMT, um, 5 MEO DMT, you know, things like that. And I said, so how, how would I be able to get a hold of some of this? So then I started looking into, oh, I can grow these I I didn't know like I had no idea like I knew you could grow like turkey tail mushrooms like I know somebody who grows turkey tail mushrooms for medicinal purposes I was like well if you can grow those then I guess it makes sense that you could grow psilocybin producing mushrooms so um I started going down uh, a rabbit hole I mean just like everybody does like when their curiosity is peaked and they want to you know they want to um try their hand at it and so 
obviously the easiest ones to grow from home are the Cubensis variety. Um, so I bought my very first, and I, well, I talked to my husband and I was like, listen, I want to do this. I want to grow these mushrooms. <laughs> are you going to be okay with me? Like, you know, growing them in our closet. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Do it. Do what you feel like you need to do to, to, to get better. Um, well, Missy, I can tell you, uh, being a guy in, and I get to look at the analytics and the demographics of, of, you know, the podcast viewers. Yeah. It, it's still pretty close to 90% guys. So <laughs> I, there are a lot of guys out there that the idea of their wives coming to them and saying, are you okay with me growing mushrooms? <laughs> I can't think of too many guys that are going to say, absolutely. Not. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, you know, he, he loves, you know, cannabis. He's a big cannabis user and, you know, supporter. Um, so for him, this was not that, different right. not too different so he was like yeah go for it but it's just funny because he's very much just you know he takes a back seat to a lot of this I do all of the myco work all of the myco stuff I talk to him about it and a lot of times he'll just be like yeah okay sounds good but you know I'm the one who really knows the community and really right. knows what I'm doing and I just kind of keep them I kind of let him know what's going on uh, with it and what's all involved. And so he gets it. But um, so, yeah, I, I got my first four syringe from Sporeworks and it was B plus. And I remember like being so fascinated. I did PF tech. So a lot of times when people come to me and they say, hey, how do I start cultivating? I always recommend PF tech as a go to. It's really if you follow it exactly how it's laid out you should have no problem growing for yourself. Like it's really just follow it to a T and you will be just fine and you will get mushrooms. Um, and so I did it that way, but instead of doing like the shotgun fruiting chamber, I did the shred to bulk. So I shredded it and I put it, uh, mixed it in with some coconut pour and berm and a shoebox tub. And I did the whole dub tub uh, thing. And I remember getting my first little cubenses and I just, I was enthralled and I was fascinated that I made this, like I did this. So in that regard, I feel like I had this connection with, with these mushrooms that I, that I grew. So I feel that it made my ex first experience taking mushrooms uh, that much more special because I just, I loved these little, you know, these little mushrooms. I just loved them so much. And I did it. I grew them. I made something out of almost literal nothing. So to me, it was just like, blew my mind. And this whole world just opened up to me where I was like, wow, I could, I could grow more of these and I could do this. But vending didn't really become a thing until, um, I don't know, maybe like two and a half years into actually just kind of dabbling and growing my, just growing some for my, for myself. And then I had a friend who was like, you know, you could sell the spores, right? You could do this. You could make multi-spore syringes, start selling them, join. I think Spore Swaps was the first group that I joined on Facebook. And then that's where I kind of started vending. And, you know, it. and again, a whole new world opened up to me because I didn't even realize that there was this community of people who love mushrooms. There's <laughs> a couple of, like of us. Yep. Yeah, there's <laughs> a couple growing. people out there. And it's grown, so it's wild seeing how much it's grown too. And it's exciting. Um, I created my own ladies of mycology group, just specifically for women who want kind of a safer space to connect with other women who are really, really into mushrooms and mycology. And it's, it, it, we cover everything from, you know, gourmet to actives. Um, but it was just wild. So I just kind of started doing a little bit of that. And that's where I think when we connected, you know, I was writing the notes and doing all of that. And that was such a fun process for me. I love doing that. But of course, you know, with everything, things get busy. And then I, you know, I stopped doing the notes just because it just takes so much time. And, you know, I do have a full-time job that I do during it, the day. It was impressive. I wanted to just say for the, uh, for, for the viewers, and I kept it for so long. And then <laughs> I forget what was going. I, I got in one of those like clean house modes. And so I went through, I was running out of shelf space and I ended up throwing it out. I so regret it because it's really, in my opinion, one of my relics of, of, of my origin. Um, 
But yeah. I mean, it wasn't just, it was like some fancy metallic marker and, yeah. and it had a border. <laughs> I mean, it was ornamentation. I mean, in the back of my head, I was like, this was like the level of a, of a note that you would send to the person like that you loved in <laughs> your high school, but it, it, but better <laughs> executed by an adult. And I was like, wow, she loves what she's doing. Like she, yeah. this is, uh, this is probably a sacred thing that she's, you know, getting this genetic to me. She knows her role in this process. Um, that's missed by a lot of people. Some people are just too busy, like like you just stated, but yeah. that you took that opportunity that I just, again, I, I want to emphasize, it was very meaningful and you you made that. I mean, now if your genetics sucked, I'm going to tell you right now, Missy, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> I'd have been like, screw Missy, her genetics are garbage. I'm but luckily, luckily the genetics were even better than the notes, so it all sort of worked together very well. Um, but yeah, Thanks. it's the... Uh, it, it 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 is really fascinating. You last five years, me the la little over a year and a half. Even just in a year and a half, the changes are pretty substantial. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny when I started vending. You know this. A lot of people know that I was going as Michael Bolton. So it was funny when I was nailing off the genetics and with like this written note with very feminine handwriting. Right. And when I finally came out and was as Missy Maiko and I was like, hey, I'm, a, I'm a female, uh, people were like, I knew something was, I knew something was weird. Like it didn't seem to match up that you were going as Michael Bolton and that you were writing these beautifully, beautifully written letters. <laughs> So I just thought that was really funny, but uh, yeah. So shout, shout out to that. Now you deferred to, to an actual male who, who also used the same screen name. Shout out to, 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 to now uh, still uh, yeah. going real Mo Michael Bolton, I, I guess we would say. Yeah. You can be, Michael. you can be Michaela Bolton or Michaela Bolton someday if you want to be, I guess. You know, I, I look back now and I'm like, I wish I would have just done something a little bit more creative than Missy Maiko, but it is what it is. And it, you know, this is what people know me as now. So for me, there's no, there's it no, works. It, now. it works. I've, it I've bad. done that too, where I'm like, really as good as you could get was Maiko geeky. I mean, my thought process was I'm a little bit of a science nerd. I'm probably always going to have a nerdy approach to this, you know, so, but nerds aren't cool. Geeks are a little bit cooler. So I'm like, let's go Michael Geeky. Yeah, so I, just, it is. I just did a, I just did a June themed um, kind of sale because the inner nerd in me, you know, I'm a big right. Dune fan and the trailer just dropped with a new Dune too. So, I mean, if you're in mycology, you are a nerd. It's just, you probably are. You probably are. And it's okay. Just accept it. Now, I will say this, though, I, I meet a surprising number of guys who I am utterly certain were like popular jocks in high school mm -hmm. who have now turned into nerds. Yeah, yeah. So, same. so it, it it can bring out that deep seated inner, you know, geek or nerd or mm -hmm. not dweebs. I don't meet too many dweebs. I think dweebs are the official uncool version in that whole <laughs> category. But if you love it enough, if you love mycology enough, you you can't help but to right. dive into the science behind it to understand why things work the way they do. I mean, because you could just very casually just grow them for yourself and not really think about the science of it all, but you start getting to the level of, you know, hybridizing, you know, breeding mushrooms. Right. You need to understand the science behind it. And that's still something that I'm working on getting to. Theoretically, I know and I understand it in my head. But have I actually physically done it yet? No, but I'm getting there and I'm working on oh, it. Good. But also understanding that there is so much science behind it and it's absolutely fascinating. Like I'll just sit there and listen to a podcast about it and I'll just start writing myself notes. I start researching up what the terms mean, like monokaryotic and you know all of that stuff where I don't say these words out loud very often. So when I do try to say them out loud, they sound kind of weird. So, but I, you know, I sit there and I listen and I write notes and that's the best way I learn is to writing down notes and then researching the different terms and then understanding what that means. And then kind of putting it together as like a full picture of an understanding of the process. So um, yeah, it's, 
if you like Myco, you you got to learn the science. <laughs> uh, sooner or later, you do. Or yeah. you will. You yes. will. You don't have to. You can be a mindless robot and just follow a rule and that's and fine mushrooms. too honestly that's fine too if you're just a casual grower like that's fine. that's totally fine and but it does seem more. like sooner or later to everybody's individual capacity they're they're they they do geek out a little bit yeah absolutely especially with your podcast now learning all the right science. yeah i'm giving everybody i mean i am definitely encouraging obsessive compulsive behavior when it comes to <laughs> I mean, three, four, five hour podcasts. What am I doing? <laughs> anyway, so, but you know, we're shifting that. We're trying to pare it down. Maybe better to do multiple smaller episodes. We'll, we'll, we'll get it all figured out. It's an yeah. evolving process. It's a little more digestible, but I mean, yeah. some people love those long, you know, really long podcasts. You know, a lot of podcast people right. do it two hours long and you know some people really enjoy it so i guess it just depends on what your audience is going to say about it exactly all right well so uh let, let's get into some of your fruit okay uh, we just got done talking about all your fire genetics so let's see what they look like these are the new ones i'm working on right now and all right well you got one you want to start with or you want me to pick it oh <gasps> just pick all right, let, let's go old school. I'm going to start basic. We'll just go in PE right here. Oh, PE, yeah. So I've been doing a lot just lately. I've just doing, I've been doing a lot of bag tech. So I've been perfect, perfecting my bag tech. And this is one of the ones that are just responds so well to growing in a bag. Um, this is PE. So this is an isolation I originally got from uh, Mana from Heaven, uh, who's a great cultivator um he's on instagram and i just love his work so much and so i was pretty stoked when i got uh <laughs> his pe isolation and i've been working on this one now for the last i'm gonna say like the last year or so um or six months or something like that but yeah this is one that i just grew recently these are my most recent pe's and again using bag tech and they just i mean they're just so robust and they're huge and they love the bag um so this was one this was the first flush it i just got this one pe fruit <laughs> it was just this guy and it was yeah 279 grams just this guy alone and it fit perfectly in my hand it was almost like a football like i could have just you know tossed it but um not that i would do that because it's my baby i mean i might <laughs> want to play a little football with this one i know before, it, before i ingest it my 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 right? might happen yeah so i've cloned that one yeah so that's what it looks like like in my hand i've cloned that one so i'll be working on that clone and just you know continuing this this lineage because it's it's fantastic it's a really really awesome pe variety and i love now, it now give me a little feedback here uh, i mean i've grown pe but uh for for new people or people who have not grown it would you consider it uh super easy super hard where would you put it in the like when should you consider growing pea oh that's a hard one because for me it's easy but for you know beginners maybe not the best one to start off with i would say right. maybe get a few grows under your belt and then maybe test out how you do with pe um definitely not one for just starting out though um i would put it somewhere in the middle okay. of kind of not beginner, but not quite, you know, like expert, like in the middle. I'm with you on that. I yeah. I usually tell people start out with the basic cubes. Yep. Maybe try a Melmac. You learn a couple things about how thirsty fruit can get and monitoring, mm -hmm. you know, the cake cake moisture content a little bit better. Yeah. And I usually say PE like third, followed by apes, and then you can get you know, super weird. Yeah, that, that's the thing. When you're starting off, you definitely don't want to set yourself up for failure. So you want to start with something that you're going to get good results because then it kind of yeah, builds yeah. up your confidence. You're, you know, you understand what you're doing as far as like your your skill and maybe what you could do to improve that skill. Um, so it's really just a slow work up. And the more you do it, the better you get, the more advanced your skills will be. And then you can really start dabbling with, with some of the crazier stuff that we see. I like it. I like them crazy. All right. So let's, let, let's keep going here. These what are the, here? So these are the Costa Rican volcanoes. I think they're also called 
the renal volcano. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they originate from the renal volcano in Costa Rica. And the reason why I wanted to show these ones is because they're so damn cute. Like they're not the biggest group. They're not. They're about a good medium size, smallish medium size, but the color on them is just so fantastic. And they will actually fruit pretty well. I mean, I've gotten four flushes of these little volcanoes. They don't cluster. They do grow pretty individually, um, which I actually kind of like. I kind of like the fruits that grow individually. It just makes it easier for harvesting. The ones that cluster a lot can be a real pain in the ass. They, and they, they just rip the sub right. You, I, yeah. I have to cut them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So these ones are just perfect. These are really good for beginners. Um, they're not as quick and fast as maybe like a golden teacher, but they're still pretty good for, for starting off. But the colors on them were just, I just love them. Just, just how they look. They're beautiful. They, they have a nice sturdy stipe. They have yeah. a cute nice little weight cap, nice color. Yeah. It's a cool fruit. It is. It is. And you know, I don't see this one, you know, very often people don't. I don't really think I've ever seen it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a cool one. Yeah. All right, so let's keep going. Now we're going to go to one maybe quite a few people have heard of. Yes. Yours is looking pretty awesome. Pretty curvy, curvilicious. She's looking I mean, pretty. yeah, this is like the Selma Hayek of uh, Purple <laughs> Mystics right here. This yes. Purple Mystic is very... Okay, so here's the thing about the Purple Mystic, okay? They don't fruit well. They take forever. I'm very honest about this variety. Like, yeah. they, they take forever to fruit. They are a pain in the ass. Um, you know, they don't um, canopy. They grow pretty individually. And out of a tub, I can usually get maybe three individual fruits out of one flush. So it's not one. Um, I would say this is not a really good one for beginners. I would say maybe more for medium to more advanced uh, growers. And I say this because, like, it's just just the way it grows. Like I said, it's not very prolific. It's not an easy one. It just takes a long time. The reason why I keep this one in my menu is because I had a very mystical experience with this variety. So I have a very, it holds a special place in my heart. Like, you know, I don't know, like some people talk about meeting entities and I always attributed that to like DMT. Um, I met an entity on a dose of Purple Mystic. So for me, it's it's very special and it's just something I feel like needs to continue and needs to be put out into the world because it's just it's special. Yeah, it's a it's a I mean, and that's a monster version. Your ISO looks real nice. Yeah, they're they're crazy. They're crazy. All right. Galactic gorillas. Galactic gorillas. Yeah. So this this is the first time I've been growing. I started growing this one. So um, Kyle from Team United sent me these ones and he likes to send me some really crazy stuff that he works on. Um, just like kind of what we talked about, you know, when you're working on a lot of varieties, it is helpful when you send them out to different people to, to experiment and to grow out and see what kind of phenotypes uh, we get. So these ones are really, really funky. Um, and I just harvested these just a couple of days ago. So they're pretty wild looking. They're kind of like gnarly and um, the caps are kind of small, but I think that they're really cool for someone who's looking for something really like, you know, typically unique, I would say this one would be a good one to, 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 you know, try out. These are the Zool Apes. So these ones are really, were really interesting. I got a huge tub out of them and they grew crazily. Um, but they have this really unique bluing in the center. They kind of remind me of Jack Frost a little bit, but I know that they're Azul Apes. Um, so this was actually a pretty easy one to work with as far as apes go because apes typically have are notoriously can be notoriously like challenging to grow and they take a long time these ones weren't so bad um i would say definitely take longer than jack frost but not as long as the typical ape strain goes um but i got a really huge tub out of these ones so um an easy one to grow for people who you know are work with agar know how to work with agar um definitely give these ones a try they're really cute yeah the so colors. they remind me of an ape revert i grew but they mm -hmm. got a little more of a jack frost uh, look yeah ah uh, the cosmic ghost rider 
Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah, this is also a one I got from uh, Kyle at Psych Team United. Um, this is a really awesome, again, this is a bag tech. I've been really into bag tech lately. Um, I've been getting really great results out of them. So this is one of uh, a variety that I grew using um, my bag tech method. And it's just, it. I mean, this was a first flush of, oh, of the bag tech. It and amazing. It's, it was amazing. And then I actually was able, I didn't destroy the bag. So I was actually able to very carefully maneuver it out of the bag. So I was able to put the cake back in there to get a second, you know, a subsequent uh, flush uh, from that. So, but yeah, they're, they're hardy. Uh, they're thick, they're very dense and their caps are just absolutely beautiful. So a great fruiting uh, advanced variety. Yeah, that's a great. Depths of outer space. Yes. So this this is one I was um, I'm helping uh, Kyle with uh, stabilize, and it is a an SV10 uh, crossed with Clockwork Orange. So from the Tat lineage. Um, so I grew these again using Bag Tech because I've just been obsessed with Bag Tech lately, and I grew just these this beautiful girl. I I didn't know you know a lot of these ones that Kyle sends me are you know, I'm just growing for the first time. I don't know how they're going to turn out. Of course, you know, some people post photos of certain strains and you kind of have a general idea what to expect. But some of some of these, you know, newer crosses, like you just don't know what you're going to get. I don't think I could be happier with the results that I got from this cross. I mean, just absolutely stunning. Um, the bluing, I, I waited. So I, I saw that it got really big in the bag. But I also waited about three days after it got as big as it was going to get. I waited three days um, before I harvested them. And so it got this really beautiful bluing kind of yellowish tinge to the cap. Um, so it's one that hasn't been named yet. But, you know, in, in talks with uh, Kyle, uh, we decided to name it Andromeda. So that's one, th this one is not released yet um, because we are working on stabilizing it right now, but I've cloned these guys and um, sending some back to Kyle and we'll be kind of collaborating and working on the, on this one together. All right. Well, uh, cool fruit as always, uh, you know, I don't always get to keep up with everybody's fruit these days. So um, I love just having, you know, old friends on to see what they're up to. And uh, it's cool. You're working with Kyle. Um, mm -hmm. I've really been pushing everybody like find some myco friends that yeah. you can trade spores with that you can trade cultures with and just start working projects you know that's you, you can't have too many of those kind of friends yeah absolutely and kyle and i go back so i feel like i've known him for so long and so we have that you know same thing with nikki uh right. we you know we we're all started off in spore swaps so we still have that you know connection and we stay in touch because of our experience there so so yeah, it's it's really cool that we're still connected and that we stay in touch. And Kyle is, you know, willing to send me stuff to work on, which is great. Yeah, it's almost like you know going to like your high school reunion, <laughs> seeing all your best friends and like, oh yeah, we're still friends. And yeah, and you're like, wow, I haven't seen you for 20 years, but we're cracking jokes like we used to 20 years ago, just like right off the bat. It's great. Yeah, exactly. Anytime these guys message me, I'm just like, oh, it's just back to the same old same. You yeah, know, it yeah. kind of, it takes me right back to where we all started, and it's just like they're just like, you know, the next the next. They're the homies. They're the homies. They they're really the are. Homies. That's they cool. really are. Yeah, for real. Cool. All right. So so we talked about kind of how you got into things. Um, you, you know the your path, so to speak. We've seen some fruit, amazing fruit. What you're working on right now. Um, let's make sure we go over here real quick. Um, where are you at with tax? Like what grain do you run? What do you grow your fruit in? Just run me through kind of how you do things. Yeah. So, um, whole oats is my main grain. Um, and the reason why I use whole oats is because I mean, I could get a 50 pound bag for like, I think the price just went up. It's like $20 now. I used to be able to get a 50 pound bag for 15 dollars for my local feed store. Now it's up 20 bucks, which is still not terrible because I have grains that last me for years and years. So that one's an easy one. And I know that tech, like the back of my hand, like, you know, there's still some things that I refer back to a book that I jot down all my notes to. But when it comes to 
popcorn, uh, another one that I run pretty heavily in addition to whole oats like that. I just, I can run it like, you know, it's nothing like with my eyes closed. So um, when I'm not running whole oats, occasionally, like if I need something to colonize a little quicker, like let's say I have like this gap between, you know, fruiting and getting, you know, spawn ready to get back into fruiting. Um, I have moments like that. I always try to like time things, right? So I have like tubs fruiting and I have grains colonizing kind of simultaneously. And ideally when those are done fruiting, then I'll be getting the spawns into fruiting or, you know, but it never really works out that way. <laughs> so if I'm eager to get some things back into spawn and get things back into rotation quickly, I always go back to uh, popping corn and oh, yeah. there's something, I don't know why, but popping corn, people are like, oh, it's all nice and slow. Not in my experience, like popping Who corn. Who are these me. people? Let's bring these people on and, and let's, I mean, what? Yeah, seriously, because I'm just like, in my experience, popping corn colonizes so fast, so quick. So if I'm anxious to get things going, if I'm not as anxious and I have some time, I'll use my whole oats. I have a whole tub of it. So, I mean, you know, whatever. But yeah, if I'm anxious to get some more things going pretty quickly, I always do popcorn tech. Popcorn tech is super easy for me. Um, it's a little bit different than than whole oats. You know, whole oats, you can prep it just like rye, with the exception of it needs a little bit longer to sterilize just because I think it has a lot of endospore content. And so it could potentially contaminate a little quicker, a little easier. Um, but popping corn is super easy. I just get it hydrated. So I pressure cook it for a good 30 minutes, obviously after a good wash and rinse, because you always want to wash and rinse everything that you're using. And then well, I, though I don't, you don't, I, I think, I think it was natural state mycology, uh, shout out to natural state yeah, mycology. He, um, he had a video or a picture recently showing uh, how dirty, even just off the shelf, jiffy pop popcorn can be. And I was like, damn, yeah, son. Yep. But you know what? I have never washed it, never had a problem, but he did make me get a little OCD going, man, maybe I need to start start washing this stuff. But yeah, yeah. isn't that yeah. crazy, though, that we eat that? I know. It's wild. Like, and it's same thing with like the fruit that you get. It's like I have started like soaking my, you know, fruits in like a little bit of vinegar and, and water, you know. Right. And just the water that gets dumped out from just the fruit is so nasty. So I guess oh, for yeah. me, I just take the extra precaution. And for me, it's just, you know, it's easy. Just wash and rinse. Just figure. I'm used to making rice all the time because I'm Asian. So to me, washing and rinsing grains for, you know, uh, for my work is like not a big deal. So uh, you, you were born into the grain rinsing process. I mean, I feel like as a white dude, I step up my rice game. Two things. <laughs> washing my rice yes. and getting getting a rice cooker oh man if i was did it. not wash my rice i would never hear the end of it from my asian mother so it was really drilled into me <laughs> really early on so so that to me that's just a natural process wash and rinse and then uh for the popcorn i like to hydrate it get it in the um pc and hydrate it for a good maybe 20 30 minutes at 15 psi that's like the standard right um and then i will just you know drain those and then lay them out to dry and then load them up in either bags or jars. Like I kind of do a mixture of both. Um, I like jars because I can, you know, they are obviously super easy, but then if I'm running out of room in my pressure cooker, I just bust out the grain bags because then I can cram them <laughs> at the very top. So then I can get the most bang for my buck in that one run. Right. So, so I tend to do that. And like I said, popcorn is just, Eat, like it's such a fast colonizing grain that to me it's just it's such an easy go-to plus I can find it it's not as cheap obviously as is a uh, whole oats but it's still you know, it's not too bad so so I definitely keep that on hand so those are the two I run the most I, I really don't do anything else like I've done rye before I've done wild bird seed before in my pf tech you know, starting days. Um, but yeah, I just stick to those two right now. So predominantly whole oats and then secondary is, is the popping corn. And then, like I said, I, you know, I, I stick with dub tubs and I like dub tubs because I can, you know, I have a closet that I have here in my office and I can just run a bunch of varieties at one time. It's, you know, it's easy on the space. Um, and so I can just run a lot at the same time. And so, and also same thing with the bags, the bags are, 
you know, they're convenient for if you don't have a lot of space. And also, like I mentioned earlier that I've been doing a lot of bag tech lately. I've just been getting some really amazing results from from my bag tech. And so I've just been doing, I'm like, it's been, I'm doing amazing. So why change it? Um, so I've just been kind of going that route. Um, and I've been getting some really great results. And I've had a lot of people message me like, what are, what are you doing in your bags? What are you doing in your bags? And it's just like, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple. Like you just let the grains colonize, right? You obviously want it to stand straight up. So you're getting some of that airflow from your, um, the patch. And once that's colonized, I mix in the substrate and then I just let that colonize. I seal it back up. I don't do anything fancy. I don't have an expensive little fancy sealer. I use masking tape, sometimes micropore tape. It's handy. It's there. It's one less thing I have to buy. <laughs> so, so I do that and I just let the grains colonize uh, the whole cake. And then I, you know, kind of once that's all done colonizing, I go about an inch, maybe an inch above where the top of the cake ends. And I poke a bunch of holes all the way around, just little holes. I, I've used like a nail, um, a nail from like hanging uh, pictures. And sometimes I've even used the tip of my scalpel and I'll just go all the way around. And I don't have an exact measurement of the holes in between. Um, I just, I just do it. I, just it's like on. an art. You just like an artist, just doing whatever feels right, doesn't you it? You know, sometimes it does feel like it comes very naturally. It's weird. It's like, how do I know to do this? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, right. <laughs> I'm not sure. I really couldn't tell you. Um, but I started doing that. Um, one thing uh, Agar Addicts mentioned to me before is that he likes to use a rubber band that he puts mm -hmm. around uh, the cake. So then that way, it really helps prevent those. Um, micro uh, environments and so prevents the side pins for me i personally don't mind the side pins it's like the more with you i don't hate side pins i don't hate side pins like i i you know i i love them all yep, um yep. so i just let it do its thing i don't bother with the rubber band but for some people who maybe that's you know maybe that's something they don't like they can you know use a rubber band and then you just you just let it do its thing and it does its thing and it's beautiful and I get great results. So, so speaking of side pins and using rubber bands, and I've seen lots of different ways people, I even saw somebody punt out another case, or I think actually, no, I saw one guy who made a wooden container that he could push the bag in. And then he actually had like a compression device, right? I use a burger press, but mm -hmm. I pack the ever loving S H I T out of my sub. It gets so that first flush, there's no way there's a microclimate around that. Now yeah. after the first flush, yeah, it can come away from the edges just like it can in a tub right. a little bit. But usually by that second flush, if you get a and this does happen sometimes where it just wants to really pin hard around the whole thing. But if you let those pins go, the majority of that fruit is it's not dirty. It's, it's all yeah. up the side of the bag. It's all good. Yeah. And another thing I want to point out too, is, you know, you hear a lot of talk about light requirements, you know, for growing and it's, you know, and I have to remind some folks that, you know, mushrooms are, are not like plants that, you know, they don't need photosynthesis to grow. However, it is nice to have some ambient lighting or some kind of lighting. If you do, if you have a room that that has zero ambient light, you can just put up a natural, you know, light or uh, artificial light essentially, and that just gives the mushrooms a direction in which to grow. And I noticed that there was like this. Um, I noticed that when I was growing some of my dub tubs, and I have it in a closet, and I do have uh, windows in, in my lab in my office and lab and they actually tend to grow out towards the light oh they're phototropic for sure yeah so yeah i used to stack my tubs in a room that had a lot had a window only on one wall mm -hmm. and they all were bent towards that yes. that window yeah. so yeah i put the i was like oh that makes so much sense that you know light is not required but it's it is nice to have because it does definitely give them a direction in which to grow they know where they need to go so so there's that too. Yeah, and then um man, it might even be it might even be more sophisticated than that, right? If yeah. the the thought of it, if they're moving towards that, maybe they're thinking, 
well, if I just drop spores right where I'm at, you know, it's moist, it's humid, it might be in the shade, you know, I want to move towards getting it out there. Who, who knows? Who knows how smart these things are? They're so smart. I mean, have you seen The Last of Us? Hopefully we, that won't. That's that science. Won't that's hardcore science right there. Yeah. I mean. Hopefully that won't be like a self-fulfilling prophecy, but you know. Uh, these days, I'm pretty sure we're going to kill ourselves before mushrooms kill us. I think it's going to be our own fault. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, that's cool. So you run jars, but sometimes bags. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're you're definitely uh, growing in bags lately, but still, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we're kind of real similar on some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, tubs are great. I, I really right. love running uh, basic cubes in tubs just because they yeah, flush same. so nice. Um, yeah, same. A lot I'm of the really weird newer stuff, especially stuff that takes longer. Man, the great thing about a bag is, like you said, once you once your cake's fully colonized and then you, you know, uh, you, you mix everything uh, up. Mm -hmm. Now, for me... I'm moving that to a different bag, but whether you keep it in the same bag or not, you know, everybody can do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, all I have to do once the cake is fully colonized is I open it up. I give it a little air in front of the flow hood. I close it back up and I just put a little piece of tape or a chip clip or something like right. that. Yeah. It does not have to be sealed guys. That right. It doesn't have to be fancy. It, you really don't have to have. No. Like, you don't got to buy a $200 uh, sealer. It's just not necessary. I mean, it's um, not, sure. It's if you have the money and if you want your fancy equipment. Sure. If you want to do the gear, you can do the gear, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Right. Um, and then don't touch that thing. Leave it be. A hundred percent. Like Leave that's the beautiful thing about, I mean, it's just already perfectly dialed in. I feel like, yeah. you know, as far as the bags go, especially for the albino varieties and some of those, like I don't, the varieties that just take longer, like you mentioned, I feel like they work so well in the bags because you literally just kind of set it and forget it. I mean, I guess you could do that with dub tubs too. I am not great at leaving stuff alone. I'm not good at leaving stuff alone. I tend to baby things. I like to baby things. I like to be very hands-on. Um, so for me, like with, even with my dub tubs, I still like to kind of peek. I still like to kind of make sure everything is good. It doesn't need a little mist. Like I just can't, I'm, you know, I'm very like hands-on. <laughs> yeah, well, helicopter mom your tubs a little bit. I really have. That's okay. a, yeah, exactly. It's right. a great analogy. All right. So let's, uh, so last but not least, I, I definitely want to cover, um, you have been, uh, increasingly more active in the decriminalization movement effort in your state. Why don't you just tell me how you got into that, what you've been up to, things you've learned, um, and then maybe just some basics of how people could get involved, uh, in, in, in you know, whatever movements are going on in, in their area. Yeah, so Washington State has had a lot of different movements. You know, some is for legalization, some is for decriminalization, some of it is for statewide, some of it is for local jurisdictions. So it really just depends. I kind of fell into it by accident. I was connected to my local decriminalization group. Um, and then they started kind of focusing more on a statewide initiative. Um, and whatnot. So I actually had access to, um, I still have access to their decrim uh, social media uh, platforms. And I had one day received a message on there from a gentleman who works with the attorney who had done the initial draft of the Senate bill in my state, which is Washington state. Um, and he was looking for people to come speak to the state legislature when it was presented to the state um, as a bill. Um, in, in hopes to kind of get some really some real positivity around it. You know, he wanted people to testify. So um, he gave me the email to the attorney. I emailed him and I said, hey, you know, uh, I'd love to be able to testify if you have, you know, if you still need people. Um, and he said, well, tell me a little bit about yourself and like why you're so interested in this. And so I kind of gave him my background. Um, I'm also a U.S. veteran, so I think that was a big deal for him. Like, he is very um, pro-veteran, so like having access, I mean, I think everybody is at this point, having access to alternative medicine, because we've seen how the VA has, you know, has continually let down um, our veterans as far as treatment for PTSD and TBI go, traumatic brain injury, um, and so you know, we have a lot of veterans looking outside of the VA and trying to find ways to heal themselves that they can't access through the system. 
Um, and so I let him know, you know, that I was a military veteran and he was like, great, I really want you to speak. So I spoke at the um, legislative hearing last year, so 2022, and uh, I think I also spoke in 2021, um, but he also set up a separate meeting with one of our state representatives, who was actually one of the leads, like one of the Republican leads uh, in, in our state, and he surprised the heck out of me. I mean, this guy was just like a seemed very hardcore, very old school, you know, uh, kind of guy, but he has a son who's a veteran. And he was like, anything that will help get something like this, he was like, I'm willing to think outside of the box. And to me, that just meant so much. Um, and, and it's not just for veterans. Like, I, I think everybody really should have access to this medicine because I really see it as medicine. And it, it, of course, it's important for veterans, but it's it's just important in general for everybody. Um, but of course, his sticking point was, you know, yeah, veterans absolutely need access to this. So let's try to find a way to legalize this. So the Senate bill was actually to create a legalized program. Um, so I had a meeting with him, talked to him about my experience being a veteran, telling him my experience, my, you know, experiences with trauma and how I healed myself with psilocybin. And he, he was uh, just so receptive uh, to to um, my story, and there were a couple other veterans in that meeting as well, and they were, you know, uh, they had very amazing stories too, and so he was obviously very moved. So he wanted to get us in front of the uh, legislature again. Unfortunately, you know, the Senate bill um, it got stripped, so it's kind of a research. It's turned into more of a research bill now, um, and we are hoping with some you know, positive reports coming in at the end of the year that maybe it could be opened again for legalization. Right now, I am have been in touch with an association out of Seattle, and I feel like I'm going to butcher their name, so I don't want to, to okay. say it. Um, but they're out of Washington. They're a psychedelic alliance, and they also help promote the Senate bill. They are working on a, um, a way to decriminalize uh, in the state. And so I've reached out to them. I said, hey, if this doesn't become legalized, you know, how give me the tools and resources so I can try to make a movement here in my county in my because I'm kind of bordering on two counties. How do I get it decriminalized in my areas? Because right now, if I can focus on that, then, you know, then I think if enough smaller ju jurisdictions decriminalize it the state is going to have to recognize that, right? They're going to, it's it's a force to be reckoned with because right now we're seeing King County where Seattle is, has decriminalized it. Jefferson County in Washington state has decriminalized it. So the more and more counties and smaller ju jurisdictions that are going to decriminalize it, the state as a larger whole is going to have to address it, right? So I think if people are interested in, you know, being active, politically and trying to, you know, get involved with either legislate, uh, legalization and or decriminalization, try to find a local chapter, you know, try to reach out to, if there is none, I would recommend maybe reaching out to some attorneys uh, and just saying like, hey, I, I feel very strongly about this. Here are the states that have already either legalized or decriminalized it, you know, cite the initiatives, cite the Senate bills, um, really come in with your research done and the information, like you know it, um, and and just pitch it. And I think you will find more often than not that attorneys are going to want to help um, because we're seeing, it's funny because I feel like psychedelics are always associated with like hippies and things like that. And the more that I've been doing this and the longer I've been involved, you know, in the myco community and cultivating, I mean, I have teachers reaching out to me. I have attorneys reaching out to me who are like, tell me more about this. I want to know more about microdosing. I want to know more about how you're growing bees. Like, I want to try this. <laughs> so it's really incredible. I mean, like you're seeing it all over. Um, and especially with veterans who are coming out again from, you know, uh, post-conflict and they have severe PTSD. I mean, like we've seen the research. Uh, John Hopkins has done the research. MAPS has done incredible research to show 
it's such promising results from the use of psilocybin. I think they're also seeing like the connection between TBI, traumatic brain injuries, and folks who are involved in UFC and those, you know, uh, neurons just kind of regenerating and recreating and really helping people heal. So, I mean, you cannot overstate the benefits and there's so many benefits. This is just one little area, you know, of course, like we talked a little bit about, like I have ADD, adult ADD, microdosing has been helping me tremendously with controlling my ADD and helping me really focus and get stuff done. Uh, otherwise, I'm just kind of all over the place. <laughs> but you've heard it with like alcohol cessation, smoking cessation, um, depression, anxiety. I mean, it really is just a, it, it's not a one, you know, one pill fits all. It's not going to treat everything and anything. It's just, it's a tool for improvement. And I think the more that we get rid of that stigma around like it's a drug it's a party drug people just want to get high and while you can use it for recreation <laughs> it really has incredible benefits for a greater you know a greater good um so and, and i think it just deserves to be looked at and at minimum it just needs to be reclassified you know Plant medicine should not be in the same classification as like heroin, cocaine, you know, uh, opiates, uh, although there is a time and place for opiates, you know, um, it, it's just such a different class on its own and it really needs to be treated as such. I mean, it, it's no mystery. Marijuana and LSD and then, you know, also uh, indirectly, they, they added mushrooms in there. Yeah. Schedule one, not because there's no medicinal medicinal benefit. Even back in the 50s and 60s, they knew there was likely oh, some yeah. some therapeutic benefits there. Yeah, um, that was done. That was a political move. I mean, her heroin schedule one because that's not a political move. No, that's a dangerous drug that ruins a lot of people's yeah. lives. It definitely you know? does. But but I I've never met somebody that said, "Man, I had a great life," and then they started doing mushrooms, and it all went downhill from there. The right. stories I hear are the opposite of that. A hundred percent. And same. I mean, obviously you're going to hear some horror stories. You know, I just read something on Reddit where a guy never had taken, he's 19 year old living at home has never taking, taken any psychedelics. And he took five grams of, of ape for his very first time. He ended up Whoopsie. having called the emergency room. They had to, you know, it was just a hor horrific story, but I mean, right. it was very rare and few and in between, like you really don't hear about things like that. And a lot of times when you do hear about that, it's because the people who are utilizing it aren't prepared. They haven't had enough preparation to, you know, in, in anticipation of what the experience might be like. And, and because of the legal climate, they're doing it in yeah. private, in secret. Yeah. No training, no education. Yeah. They're just making bad decisions Absolutely. because they feel they have to do this in secret. Yeah. And I and think mistakes. there's a lot of benefits to legalization versus decriminalizations. Like there's pros and cons to both. There I, think of, I think one of the pros, because I know some people who are very just hardcore de decrim, um, but I think one of the pros to legalization is that, you know, for people who are scared, who are anxious, but they want to heal and they want to experience this, um, if they're in a safe place and they're with trained professionals, they know that they're, you know, they're safe and they can experience this without hesitation and without the worry of things that could go wrong. Because if something does go wrong or they think it's going wrong, you're going to have somebody there to help you and to guide you through it. Right. And I think that's really important, uh, a really important facet of, of utilizing this as, as a medicine. I have a family member who, you know, suffers so much from a very severe depression and, you know, I gave him uh, some mushrooms and he said, I don't feel comfortable taking this. Like, he's like, thank you, but I don't feel comfortable taking this in my home. And I don't have anybody, you know, nearby that is willing to sit me, sit with me through this experience and, and guide me. And he had mentioned if there was a place like, you know, a, a center where he could take them legally and with trained professionals that he would be, he would do it. 
Um, and so, and there's another thing about, you know, that your set and setting is obviously very important, you know, doing it in your own home, maybe that's not ideal for someone, you know, maybe it, it's a little too close to, to, you know, their, their comfort area. So they don't want to mix the two and that's totally understandable. Yeah. Also, there are a lot of factors for that one. We actually, um, uh, I, I will, somebody who will be coming, uh, on probably the week after you, mm -hmm. um, we talked about this a little bit. And then, uh, last week I talked a little bit about this. Um, but, but I'll just say, a lot of people are talking about the, uh, oh, uh, they found out that a heroic dose um, session at one of these legalized centers, I believe somewhere in Portland, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. was going to be around $3,800. And everybody's got an opinion about that. Sure. Well, now, of course, the people that have an opinion about that are the people who are already happily using this medicine in their own homes or using it out camping. They're comfortable with it. They're, they have no qualms uh, uh, about in, engaging with this medicine on their own independently. But that's not everybody. Right. Like you said, your your family member, uh, $3,800 to know that a doctor approved all the protocols, that there's a psychiatrist that, that is involved in the integration portion of the therapy, the, the, the pre-op, the, or not pre-op, the, like, the pre-session meeting, the session, and post uh, uh, post session integration, yeah, integration. all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? That's just like when people go, "Oh, geeky, your sterilizers like thirty bucks more than everybody else's." And I go, "Well, nobody's selling it on Etsy. Etsy gets ten percent. The federal government gets thirty percent because I'm yeah. doing it legally, right?" So, like, I mean, everybody right. wants to. Point. It makes sense, right? Because they have to yeah. pay overhead. They have to pay for trained staff. Yeah, they got to pay insurance. I mean, you know, if my buddy will trip sit for me for 25 bucks, great. If something goes wrong, obviously I can't sue him. He's right. not, he's not liable because he'll go, oh, you're doing a legal drug with me. Uh, like, I'm not, I'm not anybody like a judge would be like, get the heck out of here, guys. You guys are wasting my time. Right. right? But if you're a, an official business doing this, there are so many additional costs that go yeah. into this that while for me, exactly. I will never do that. Uh, right. There are many people that will go, that's the only way I will do that. And for me, as an advocate for this medicine, I don't care how mm -hmm. you do it. I yeah. don't care what steps have to be in place. I don't care if you're doing it in your bedroom, if you're doing it out in the Redwood National Forest. I don't care if you're in some little clinic. Yeah. I just want you to give it a try because yeah. I'm inclined to believe it might do a, a world of good for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. I completely agree. It's just give people an opportunity to do it how they, they see fit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If that means just doing it in your backyard with a friend or doing it at home by yourself what, or in a clinical setting, then, you know, it, it's, it's your choice and your decision. Right. And that's right. what makes life great is that you have these choices and opportunities to do it however you want to so yes and and the great thing i mean right we live in america uh, at least all i mean i have <laughs> had very few non-americans on the show in fact i don't think i've had any non-americans i've had some people who don't live in america but, yeah um you know us americans we love our individual rights our freedoms yeah. our yeah. individuality right that that just trumps yeah. everything for us um, but it's so funny then how within this community, everybody's got an opinion about God dang everything. Everything. Yeah. You know, everything. I had a guy going on and on a couple podcasts ago. Nope. You got to run grain, no soak, no simmer my way, my recipe. If you don't, you're yeah. stupid. Yeah. When people ask me for cultivation advice, I always preface by saying, this is what works for me. Right. It could totally work in a different way for other people or other people might have, have different methods. But if you're asking me, I'm going to tell you what works Thank for you. me. So, I mean, take it or leave it and do with that what you will. Take it or leave it. That's, I think yeah. that's pretty much it. Take it or yeah. leave it. This, exactly. everything on this podcast, guys, take it or leave it. Everything I say, everything Missy says, I mean, you can look at our flushes. You can see what we're doing. We know what we're doing. Um, Missy and I, I think we grow pretty similar, but I've talked to other people on this podcast who grow very differently from me mm -hmm. and they're having just as much success. So yeah, whatever absolutely. you feel like doing, try some F-A-F-O, whatever you want to do. 
yeah grab a guru copy them to a t if you get bored then let go of your guru it's okay go somewhere else try some i mean just if the medicine works for you and you enjoy cultivating it doesn't matter how you do it however you want to do it 100 percent. i agree all right well thank you so much for being on Thanks um, for this, having this me. has been great. I'm sure it won't be the last time. Uh, anytime you got something going on with your decrim uh, efforts, I definitely uh, want to know. Just shoot me a message. And even if it's for like a 15 minute, here's here's a little update. We can, we can definitely do that. Um, Sounds good. I, 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 I'm trying to do a lot more. Um, I think I'm going to have uh, Dr. Larry Norris back on. I'm going to try to bring more people from the decriminalization efforts that have succeeded come on to talk about how they succeeded, what they really think were the the clutch factors that, that made it all work. Yeah. yeah just... They laid down the template for people to take and use, like, especially yeah. when it's been successful, because the more people are doing it and the more people become involved, the louder our voices are going to be, and they won't be ignored for much longer. I mean, they can, only ignore us for so long right but the demand is going to be there and the demand is only going to get greater and it's going to be a force to be reckoned with and so they're going to have to one way or another going to have to figure it out so um so yeah put in the effort put in the time and you know if you can be involved please do so amen all right well uh thank you very much we'll we'll talk to you later uh until then uh you guys can find missy uh she's on facebook she's on instagram um i think i almost got her to come on my discord for about two seconds i think i am on your discord I just, okay I just not a lot though but you're okay so you're sort of there um I'm any, sort of there. I'm it, sure. anyway I, I got all the links to how you can get a hold of missy uh in the description below um her her shop is called the oracle shop um, I'm I'll telling you guys free purple mystic swabs. If you mentioned that you saw me on micro geeky podcast. So that gigantic one you saw while supplies last, if you're going to put in an order, I will throw one of those bad boys in there for you. All right, guys, free purple mystics. I like the color purple somehow. It really, it was never, my favorite color is actually green, but somehow, uh, purples become my podcast color. So it, so <laughs> awesome. Purple mystics. It is Yeah. nice. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right, guys. That was Missy Maiko, uh, one of my favorites, one of my, like I said, my, my first positive vendor experience. And as all you guys know, who've been screwed over by, you know, the wolves and sheep's clothing in this community, you'll never forget that first quality vendor experience. Uh, it sets a tone. It makes you really start questioning and, you know, delving deeper being more uh, careful with who you do business with, vetting people more carefully, asking more questions. Um, she She's still killing it. Rest assured, if you're looking for, man, I can't tell you how many people I still talk to who, who have even been growing for a while. They, you know, they're the dabblers. They want to try this guy. They want to try that guy. They, they're, they're quick to just try a million different people. And I can't tell you how many times they're like, eh, that didn't work out. Oh, I bought five LCs from this guy. I'd never heard of them. Oh, you'd never heard of them either. Yep. What do you know? They were all contaminated and they didn't work out. I don't know about you. I don't got time to, to just waste my time. So when I do a grow, I like it to work out. That's why I use MPG plus. That's why I, you know, if I'm growing something that requires poo sub, I use my buddy, uh, Brown treasure. Uh, there's other great vendors, but but I'm just saying I found quality people that I like working with that guarantee my grows look good. I sterilize my sub. These are just little things that I do because I'm not trying to screw up. I'm not trying to have three hours of my day be for, for nothing. If you guys understand where I'm coming from, I can't imagine that doesn't make sense. However, some people love to play around. They love to, you know, maybe be the one to find that new guy or that, that unknown uh, cultigen. That's cool. Keep doing that. If, if if that works for you and you're willing to take on that risk, go for it. Uh, you'll probably find some cool people uh, after you find a bunch of duds. Anyway, so Missy Maiko, she's great. Uh, ain't going to be the last time you see Missy Maiko on the show. She'll be back on now, especially now that I figured out how to do a little facial tracking and, and, and blur people's faces. So that'll be really nice. Um, you know, other people have not wanted to come on. I've definitely been pushing the video format. So this will be a way maybe that I can, I can get people on and still kind of show them a little bit, but you know, mask their, their face. 
right? No face, no case, whatever that's all about. I'm not in jail all the time, but some of you guys are, and you tell me all the secret phrases. So cool. Great. Um, stay out of jail, guys. Not, we got one life to live, right? Just like the soap opera says. Don't spend it in jail. Shit is not worth it. Um, I'm not saying don't grow mushrooms, though, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so speaking of ethics and, and legality, let's, uh, let's pull on my buddy Brock Lee. Uh, old episode. I think this is an even much older episode, uh, well over a year ago. And uh, we're just going to kind of bounce some ideas off him about what it means to behave ethically in the space, both as a vendor and a, a, a buyer, a grower. So uh, let's see what he's got to say. Uh, so, okay, first off, guys, I think the audience needs to know, I feel uh, maybe just slightly threatened uh, for the first time ever. I have a guest who also has a flow hood behind it. <laughs> I like it. I got to say, it's, Thanks, I, <laughs> it's a familiar territory for me. I like it. Um, and, and per usual, I usually move my my plates, but uh, you got, that's about how many I go through in a week. I don't know about you, but it seems like I can never pour enough plates, man. I They go quick. <laughs> they really, I, I knew I had a problem when I was buying my 500 count plate boxes I was buying two or three at a time and I was like oh my god and then I I kept thinking there was something I could do to dial it back but it just doesn't matter it seems like yeah every time you think the right move is to pour less plates that's not yeah you right always move. end up having to pour more and yeah, then it's like no, nope, I like just to just do them all and four then liters add them every on time standby. yeah yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. With you. <laughs> cool, man. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Brock has probably his biggest presence on Facebook. He's also, uh, I don't know how recently, but but also on, on Instagram. Um, and I, I can tell you right now, uh, before I ever talked to him, I was very impressed by this guy. His photos have a great aesthetic. Obviously, his fruit looks phenomenal. Um, but more importantly, he always puts out it's not constant, but every once in a while, there will be an educational post to the point where I knew this guy cares about playing yeah, exactly. a small <laughs> role of, you know, I want to educate people. I, I don't just want to go, look at my fruit. It's so big. It's so cool. Like, don't you wish you had this fruit? <laughs> Which that is how most of us feel after we look at your photos. Yeah. But, um, but, but Dude, yeah. I, 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 I need to start uh, posting my fail grows, so it doesn't, you know, because yes, I have yes. them too. I mean, we all, we yeah, all get we them. we all so. get them. I think yeah. we're just so like, I don't know, for me, once you get past that, okay, I'm going to get contamination from time to time or things are going to stall. I think I'm just like, just, especially in bags half the time anyway, so I'm just like chucking the garbage. I don't even think, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah I don't even think anymore to do that. Um, anyway, so. So, yeah, I just want everybody to know that this guy, uh, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, definitely worth a, a follow. He's he's just really got some juicy, uh, attractive photos of some really cool fruit. You you will never. Thanks, dude. He will always keep you excited about about the at home cultivation game for sure. Um, Thanks, but anyway, man. I wanted to bring you on because there have been several instances on Facebook where. I saw you kind of take the high road in many occasions and uh, and I, I just admired that and, and you seem to be uh, a peacekeeper in almost all situations. Very much reminded me of, you know, Dave Wombat, the ultimate diplomat, who just knows there's just no good that comes from trash talking and shit talking and yeah. complaining and all that kind of stuff. So I thought... Let's bring Brock on and, and let's let's just get his take on Thanks, dude. what's what's uh what we're doing wrong, what we could be doing better, some basics like that you think like do you ever just sit around and go, Man, if people just <laughs> did this one thing, half these arguments would go away. That kind of thing. Well, I you know, Penelius Jones kind of hit the nail on the head. We just need like more kindness and patience, you know. Well, people come, people come into our community. They don't know really much of anything. It's like right. uh, ethics are the responsibility of the admins. Really. They, they just want to learn. Like they just yep. want to learn how to grow and we need to be patient. First of all, and like, 
like he said, not just like when they ask a question, be like, hey, the search bar is over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, right. it's like we have to be, we have to set a positive example for, right. for everyone in this community. I feel like so, and and ethics isn't like it's not some. It's very basic, but it's not a tech. It's not a method. It's, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> My mom taught but, me how to so, care too. <laughs> it is simple. It is the golden rule. Yeah. And all that. But there are, I still think, even though I think when I first envisioned this this project, it was I'm gonna write a code of ethics and I'm gonna publish it on a website and there's gonna be a governing body and 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 I just I really I kind of you know I'm all in. I was going for it. I was like, hey, major corporations have a code of ethics. Um, yeah. You know, all societies have a code of ethics. So why not in this, especially in, in the actives community specifically, you know, which, as he pointed out, there's plenty of lawbreakers. There's plenty of, you know, yeah. uh, resisting uh, authority type people. You know, maybe it would behoove us to do something like this. But I think I'm more at a point where. Yes, the golden rule is probably enough in many cases, but I do still feel like there should be some basics that maybe are unwritten rules that uh, that people don't know right away. And, and we're, we're going to do a podcast specifically about navigating social media here coming up, and we're going to talk a little bit both about how content creators can keep their content up without getting it, it shut yeah. down for, for censorship reasons. But then yeah. also how, because we do have new people who come into our Discord and they're asking what's probably just enthusiastic questions, but sometimes it can kind of freak the hell out of our mods. Like, who is this guy? Why is he asking us those questions? And, oh, this is kind of weird. And, yeah, so so I, I still think it's it's good that we're talking about this stuff. Um, now, you also... Uh, so I got somebody coming up here soon who who grows uh, cacti, who grows cannabis, who grows mushrooms, mm -hmm. and so you uh, you're unique in that um, you I don't believe have a culinary background or a a lab background, but you do have a a, a trade background, um, which sounds like a pretty sweet gig, no pun intended. Um, oh, right. you cultivate honey out in uh, Hawaii, right? Yeah. So um, it's actually my buddy's uh, apiary, but I okay. just help him. Um, it's two guys. Um, I just help them extract honey and uh, they're teaching me, you know, the tricks oh, of the nice. trade. Awesome. Yeah. And, and we those... just extract it and then they give me honey in exchange. So I sell it. <laughs> nice. Dude, I the, your last post with just a big chunk of honey. I'm a sucker for just slicing it right off the comb and putting it dude, on some saltines. That is just like one of the gems of life for me. Dude, I'll take like fingerfuls and like while I'm working, yeah. it's so good, dude. I love it. <laughs> I'm with you. As I told my seven year old daughter the other day, who was telling me how much she loved honey, I said, "Did you ever think bee puke?" would taste so good and she said what? <laughs> yes, and I show her the, the, you know, the youtube she's like wow <laughs> and then she just kept eating it. it's all good anyway uh sorry that was definitely a tangent um but so so okay i i i, I, I didn't know uh, exactly your involvement in that though i thought it was very cool um so let's talk a little bit about facebook specifically mm -hmm. it tends to be a platform that all by itself already tends to generate a lot of argument, right? There's, it, it's definitely it's set up for that. Like it figures out, Oh, every time geeky sees this guy's post, he makes some <laughs> comments, he thumbs down, you know, a lot of times or he yeah. laughs at it. This is, this is, let's make sure every time this guy has a post, it gets in front of his face. Cause we want that traction. It, and being on Facebook a lot, I, I know you must see all this stuff and, and you admin a lot of groups. Is there like, what do you think the admins are not doing that they should be doing? Is there? That's a tough question. You know, um, 
I mean, we have we have a pretty good like foundation as far as like ground rules goes. Um, it's really it, that's a really hard question. <laughs> so, uh, so I, okay, I got another question. Do you think because um, we struggle with this too in, in our Discord? Um, it is we always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah. But it has inevitably proven to be true that those little brush fires, if they're not attended to, they always turn into full-blown big problems. And to the point where I have a lot of mods who are like, yeah, man, you know, we can just see it coming a mile away now. Like, yeah. we just yeah. know that the type of person and the way they talk, they can't help themselves right off the bat. They're just you know, it's troll behavior or they're just always, yeah. they're craving that fight. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta give them the boot. You know, I don't like to, but you know, it, yeah. you have to do what you gotta do. And if they're yeah. abrasive towards people, especially the, our newcomers, yeah, you gotta go, man. Like we don't, we don't tolerate that bad behavior in our community. So uh, I'm with you. Yeah. The, I, I think it, it was really when I started seeing it affect people where, I mean, I even had an incident where somebody had like a negative emojicon response to something I wrote and I had several people message me. And first off, I was like, wow, you guys are looking at these emojicons like really carefully. Um, but yeah, okay. Yeah. What the fuck is up with that? Like it's in my own server, like be an asshole to me somewhere else if you're going to be an asshole. Right. But uh but like those are the those are the little signs, right? Like this person yeah. is is an instigator. They're going to be stirring things up all the time. They're they're not in your server necessarily for a good reason or in your Facebook. Yeah, group. we don't. I mean, from what I've seen, we don't get a lot of those kind of people, but they do pop up, and we do take care of them. I mean, and we have multiple admins on our pages, so maybe I just missed it. And one of our other admins get it, but I don't always see every thing. I'm, you know, and I'm pretty busy. I'm, do, I'm doing my own thing, and uh, you know, I just try not to let little. It's, right. it's just little stuff, you know. It's like people, it's all they're awesome. gonna mean, you know. It's like it's whatever. Like people are gonna talk, they're gonna say what they want to say, and it's totally fine. But there is a a boundary, I guess you could say, if it's right. if it's uh, impacting the community in a negative way i would say they need to go but yeah yeah and you just like we're talking with uh i mean multiple guests whitebeard paniolis uh you're just trying to create a vibe um i yeah. would like to believe that everybody starting a group putting time energy into it is trying to foster you know s some microcosm of a small tight-knit community yeah. And, uh, you know, why the fuck would you try to fuck with that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much free time you have. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Not everybody's got three kids, a full-time job. I get it. Some people got more free time than me. But, like, give me a fucking break, guys. Like, if yeah. all you're doing on Facebook is shitting on people... Like, get another <laughs> hobby. You could do another hobby. You're like, take up golf. I don't care. Learn chess. Like, just do something else more constructive than, than doing that. It just doesn't. Haters going to hate, man. It's uh, <laughs> They are going to. You know, I, I try my hardest to, you know, teach people when I can. Um, I spend a lot of my free time on, through Facebook helping people. I get a lot of people messaging me directly for advice. I help them and yeah i i do the best that i can with the time that i have but uh i think um i think kindness honesty really important yeah uh Fleur, you know I, i'm sure everyone's uh, familiar with Fleur. peace love unity respect yeah. it's a huge yeah. thing it sounds a little cliche but man it it it's uh um, we need that in our community and i i feel like I at least try to portray that, and I think it's a right. it's a positive 
thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, man. I so you, you saying that made me think about. Um, I can't remember if you commented on this post or if you did the post. It was about trenching, about the oh. trench technique, and then and all you were doing, like you were definitely not trying. You weren't going. This is my tech that I invented, and you mother should be so lucky to get it. You were just like, hey, here's a technique I use. It works. Check it out. And then in the comments, it just turned into this like giant argument about who came up with that. That's not yours and this. And I'm just like, guys, how was well, I, everyone? I, yeah. 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 <laughs> what happened? I, I don't know. trying to help some people out, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's... Um, <laughs> can't really claim anything as your own in this hobby anyway, it, it, yeah yeah so that's not a good idea but it's all like i i, I get it you know it, i'm not we were <laughs> i'm not trying to like say that this is so and so's thing it's it's just it's i try to give cool credit where it, yeah i try it, to give credit where it's due you know what i mean right. like that's one thing that I find funny that I actually, now that you mentioned it earlier, is like, what, 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 could, if I could change something, it would be being able to credit the creator of a genetic on us, on a group that they are not an admin of. Like, yeah. they, I feel like people deserve that credit. And it's not like 100%. we are, it's not that we are like trying to drive them business. We are just, it's respect and i i feel like that's right. an important thing yeah but that's i i'm with you there because if you don't post any of those and if you don't if you post a killer grow or a killer bag or a killer fruit the first question is what is it and who'd you get it from yep so why not just make that like the standard i mean maybe sometimes you have stuff you don't know what where it came from Maybe you got it from somebody you don't want to like highlight. Oh, we, tr you know, like, oh, I didn't go to Miss Mush for, for my iceberg. I actually got it from yeah. wardrobe and oh no. And they don't even care anyway, but they will appreciate being credited. Yeah. Like, uh, but I mean, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Even if you didn't get it from that person, you could, we should still be able to, you know, give credit to the creator of right. that genetic. I feel like it'd be great. It'd be really yeah. great. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. There's like some people are really into this and take things seriously. So they really want to know where it comes from. And some of us are paying attention. And so, you know, like maybe albino chode wave is on my radar right now. And so every grow of it I see, I want to know, is it, is it Ray's? Is it somebody else's is it you know something yep. you've been working for a while so i can start piecing together in my head well okay so ray's kind of looks like this this guy's looks a little bit different like there is a practical benefit even selfishly for that to provide that information for people and, and again at the end of the day like you're saying it, it's paying respect at yep. a bare minimum yeah uh, yeah, great. <laughs> well, I guess we're not going to solve all this overnight, and we're probably yeah, it's, never it's going a... to solve it. But it's fun to talk about it and think about those things. I, I and, love everyone in our community, the admins. I have nothing against anybody. I I feel like we are all kind of like we're all on our own little boats out at yeah. sea. You know what I mean? And we're just we're trying to figure out which way the, the waves are going to come in and which way the wind's blowing. We don't know yet. So we are just, we're, we're just trying. And I feel like uh, we just need to like work together a little bit more and figure out how we can um, help each other thrive more than a hundred percent. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. If I like, so I always say we're islands. I actually like the boat metaphor, I think better. And yeah, so if you guys are out on your boat and, you know, some people are on a little dinghy, some people are on like a nice Jeff Bezos 140 foot yacht. Um, but when that newbie, you know, with the life jacket on is is crying up at you from your, your second uh, level, you know, jacuzzi on, on your yacht, like maybe just help them out.
like even if it's just pointing them in the right direction or just uh, a small word of encouragement yeah right? like all that everything you're saying is either going to be positive or negative like it's pretty hard to make a neutral comment yeah and yeah i i agree if, if we just yeah a little bit more on you that. know i'm probably i i hope you know, I probably ruffled a few feathers, but I'm not, I don't mean anything negative by it. And yeah, I hope people understand that it's not, yeah. it's nothing personal. It's just, it's my opinion, you know, right. it's like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, once you take on that role of admin, <clears throat> then, you know, I, I don't know about you, but in the beginning, I really just thought I could just make everybody happy and, 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 the mods were like, yeah, you know, you just, there's just going to be yeah. some people that are not going to be happy with you. It's just nothing you can do. Yeah. About it. Yep. it is what it is. All right, man. Well, uh, sorry, we were a little bit late. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Uh, we'll have to have you back and actually get into some of your growing because you are definitely in my, I think maybe my top five or real close to my Thanks, top dude. five of like just some of my, Every time as I'm scrolling, I even just see your name. I'm just like, oh, what's this going to be? Oh, yeah. Okay, this is cool. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk growing a little bit more another time. How about that? All right, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, yeah. Take care, Brock. All right, guys. That was Brock Lee. He's on Facebook. Check him out. He's got a Mycotech uh, Facebook group. He's in a bunch of the other groups. If he's in the group, it's probably a pretty decent group. Uh, he's a good litmus test for uh, the quality of a Facebook group, I, I in my opinion. Um, I know he's pretty present in the genetic house, uh, and and I can't say enough good things about uh, both him and uh, Mycotech, genetic house, Broccoli, James Cruz, good people. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at right now. This place is getting flooded with people. I've been around long enough now. I'm not a newbie. Uh, and I'm as deep in this as any human being can possibly get on a day-to-day -day basis. If I tell you somebody's a good guy, that's a, that's a good guy. I'm not steering you wrong. I promise. I don't. They, they don't got their hands in my pockets. I'm not getting any payola. I'm still not making a dime doing this. Uh, so if I tell you somebody's good, it's because they're freaking good. And uh, I got hundreds, if not thousands, of people out there who can attest to that. Find me somebody that says I steered them wrong. You ain't gonna that easy. Anyway, uh, you know what I hope you guys do this week? Grow some mushrooms.